Okay. Show me. Hi there guys, welcome to the Dutch Sashi channel. Part 1, short term review of the content of this here box from Top Sky. I've got the F7X FEV goggle here. And of course, this is version 2 of that goggle. Yes, and um, I actually have a version 1 as well. However, uh, will I be comparing the two? No, because my version 1 by this time uh, has uh, been heavily modified. Yeah, um, I'll tell you in a second what I've modified and why. In this video I'll try and tell you as much as I can if this version 2 is now a goggle you'd want to uh, consider. And uh, not unimportantly because uh, these are expensive products. Well, that's, that's all relative of course, but it's not tens of euros, it's several hundreds of euros a goggle like this. Okay, let's see what we have. Just like on the version 1, we've got this uh, semi hard case, soft case uh, pouch, bag, case thing, which I uh, do appreciate. It's uh, reasonably big, so uh, I actually use <laughs> the version 1 1's pouch for my uh, Aomway goggle. <laughs> yeah, because the pouch that comes with the Aomway goggle is uh, a little too small. Oh, you get uh, a cleaning cloth for the lenses. You get a quick reference guide on instruction manual. Well, it's a quick reference for what the buttons and such do. And a manual, which is in English. And it's a reasonable, uh, yeah, a reasonably written manual with some Chinglish here and there. And you get this uh, sticker sheet. And I'm not completely sure what it's for. But um, I'd use it to mark my batteries. For instance, I put stickers on uh, my older series batches of lipos and maybe two on even older ones so I can uh, keep track of the freshness of my lipos, so to speak. So uh, again, I'm not sure why they included this, but I do appreciate it. Okay, so two pouches, completely identical pouches, version one, version two. And this may be as good a time as any to list the, the shortcomings. There are definite shortcomings in the version 1, which I hope will be addressed in this version 2. And if they are not, well, um, probably not the best option uh, to go for. Uh, okay, but uh, let's not uh, get ahead of ourselves. I do, um, and I should state this, I do want to give this version 2 a uh, fair chance. I have no beef affiliation or whatever with Top Sky uh, whatsoever. I got them from uh, Banggood. I ordered them myself. And um, yes, if you use the link in uh, the description, I do get a kickback. So that way you can support my channel. But other than that, I couldn't, well, um, I could care less. Let me explain that. If this is a good option, which I do hope it is, because, well, I've spent the money. But apart from that, what's more important, competition in this market uh, would be welcome, I think. More competition is good for everybody, for the consumers and uh, for, well, the manufacturers, maybe not immediately, but you'd, uh, well... They, get, <laughs> they have an incentive to get off their lazy asses, uh, so to speak. So, innovation, that's what we'd have if we'd have more competition in this market. So, again, a list of the shortcomings of version 1. At least for me, the major things wrong with version 1. Light leakage. So, the let me actually show you. This outer shell, this red plastic, leaks light, and that's uh, and more than I uh, I'd want. A little light leakage I'm okay with because you concentrate on the, the FPV image, uh, but far too much. Especially, and I hope that'll be visible if I hook it up. 
there's an LED over here. Um, I hope you can see that. But uh, that's uh, the DVR indicator and that light leaks into the goggle. Uh, more than sunlight even. So yeah, um, again I have modified my goggle extensively. I have painted up the inners of this goggle with uh, rubber which uh, is uh, pretty uh, thick and uh, doesn't uh, let in light as you can imagine. So my version 1 doesn't have light leakage anymore but again of course the version 2 should now address that right out of the box. Okay so light leakage that's one. Second thing um, I have an, uh, a module over here a Relac dual diversity module and I've modified the goggle to accommodate that module, that receiver module. R straight out of the box that didn't fit at all. So I hope this version 2 will let me simply slot that in without using a Dremel. Third thing, the DVR. And the DVR, uh, and most people, most FPV pilots would uh, use the DVR obviously to refine their model if they've lost them uh, in the woods or in the grass. Um, I'm sure you can imagine that DVR is very important uh, to me as a YouTuber because I want to record my flights and I want to show you what happens. Right, so um, the DVR in this version 1 was basically unusable. Um, it uh, does record in PAL and not at all in NTSC or the other way around. But well, anyway, I have cameras, I have both PAL and uh, NTSC cameras, so useless. Uh, besides that, the file header was uh, written incorrectly, which led to the video speed being all wrong. Twice the speed or something. But uh, anyway, uh, useless. DVR, useless. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, so I really, really hope the version 2 addresses that. Um, I do have the latest firmware on my version 1, but still, um, I'm not satisfied uh, with the DVR in this version 1. Okay, and this faceplate. There are two things wrong with this faceplate. If you want to attach the, the foam, you'll have to use uh, weird straps with Velcro and it looks stupid and it feels stupid on your face and it's uh, completely useless. So yeah, uh, I know they've addressed that in version 2, so thank you very much. And the other thing with this faceplate is that it comes off easily, far too easily. Now I haven't had much of a problem with that. Maybe I'm uh, careful with my goggles in the way I store and transport them. But still, sometimes they do come off. Yeah, um, I think it's not a lot better on the version 2. Maybe a little. So if... If I'd opt to use this version 2 as my daily driver, I'll probably use some Plasti Dip to attach the faceplate to the goggle itself. Okay, last thing, there's some ghosting in the FEV image. It uh, wasn't too much of a concern to me, I wasn't too bothered. Maybe uh, it depends on the on the FV camera you are using if it shows up a lot or something or maybe my eyes or my mind isn't uh, that sensitive to it but it would be nice if that's better on this version 2. So that's uh, basically the list of things I want to try and uh, address in this uh, video. Ah yeah there's one more thing and I already know that's not addressed in this version 2. The module, the receiver module that comes with these goggles is... Well, uh, they could have uh, just shipped the goggle without it, I think. Um, yes, I do realize that the cost, the extra cost of uh, adding this receiver is probably negligible. Very low, less than five uh, dollars I'd say. So maybe it's uh, good of them to add this uh, receiver. But I won't be using it 
and I know it's not much use. Yeah, it will get you started, but that's about all I can say about this module. All right, version two of the F7X, or was it the uh, FX7? No, F7X. <laughs> okay, let's see what we have. Uh, let's quickly have a browse through what you actually get, and uh, probably not a whole lot different. Here is the goggle, and it looks uh, very much the same. It's it is not the same, but it very much looks the same. You get the same aerial. Uh, the FV antenna that comes with it is actually pretty good. Um, I've used the one uh, from the version one, and uh, no problems with this uh, FV antenna. So cool. You get a, a charger for the battery, of course, uh, which uh, has a US plug. Um, yeah, okay, so the same as uh, on version one, at least the one I got. Here is that big honking lipo. Uh, by the way, some people complained about the size of this battery. I have no beef with the size of this battery. It never uh, bothered me in any way. I actually even uh, use this uh, battery for my uh, AOMA uh, goggle. So uh, yeah, I'm fine with that. And it's a what is it? A 2200 2S uh, lipo, same as on the version one. Okay, again you get that uh, receiver. Um, yeah, I won't be using it. Okay, and you get a bunch of cables. Well, two actually, an HDMI in cable. Yes, the cockle has an HDMI input port, and a analog video cable, probably also for external receivers, analog receivers. Last thing, you get an alternate faceplate, and as you can see, it now has uh, Velcro on the faceplate. Very nice, much better. So that's one uh, thing addressed. And um, yeah, this one is a little thinner than the one installed on the goggle, as you can see. So yeah, that's definitely far better. This works better than the version 1. Thank you very much. Okay, so why not uh, run through all them shortcomings one by one and see what has happened with this version 2. So the first thing, light leakage. This is the old goggle version 1. This is the newer one, and it'll be very hard to see in this video for you, probably. But this version 2, uh, the, the red plastic, is a little bit darker. Now, what I think has happened is that this, the version 1, the old one, is uh, a red plastic. And the new one is maybe black plastic, and uh, after uh, the molding was done, uh, they painted them. Uh, it looks like that. Uh, in very short, no light leakage. Excellent. So yeah, it's it's very hard, by the way, to show you on camera uh, with a little camera in the goggles. You, you can't see the light leakage in the old version uh, either. So you'll <laughs> yeah, you'll just have to take my word for it. I don't see any light leakage anymore in the uh, new version. Not even that uh, LED, the power LED or the DVR. LED over here. If that's on, you I don't see it at all in the, in in the goggle. So light leakage fixed. Very very nice. Second thing, the receiver bay. I've taken the front cover off of the goggle, obviously, and this cover, this uh, receiver bay cover. Let's see if I can fit my relay. Receiver without modifying this here goggle. Um, that looks pretty good. Huh. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, uh, sure, it uh, does stick out. Just like on the modified version 1, but it seats in there. Oh, it wasn't completely in there yet, actually. Okay, and it's actually pretty well supported by the goggle itself as well. It actually is better <laughs> than what I had. So, excellent. Yeah, obviously I can't check 
every single uh, one receiver on the market because I simply don't have them but at least this uh, Relac receiver dual diversity and obviously I have the Achilles uh, firmware on it so a very nice receiver and that fits yeah you can't uh, put this uh, protective plate back on uh, and you wouldn't want to because uh, you wouldn't be able to see the screen and this black face plate uh, won't fit either maybe you can modify it cut a piece out if you really want that black face plate for me this is uh, just fine I'm happy to see this now you might argue that this receiver module is uh, quite exposed over here right especially the screen and it is however um, if you add some aerials some uh, antenna to the receiver those antenna will pretty much uh, protect the receiver and uh, yeah that's the same as in the version one that worked out well for me so i am okay with this sure i would have liked to be able to use that visor thing because it makes uh, the goggle look nice in my opinion of course subject to personal taste but yeah you've got a uh, you got yourself a red fev goggle this way and the receiver this receiver at least fits and I'll, uh, I'll have a link to this receiver in the description as well because it's a uh, well behaved receiver it receives well <laughs> it was well received <laughs> yeah so um okay third uh, mission in the version one or third problem in the version one the dvr do we now have a dvr that actually works well uh, let's just uh, go and do some uh, flying why not uh, right so uh, let's see what the dvr gives us now Okay, so, well, as you can uh, see, I uh, got me a DVR recording from the F7X, yay, cool. This is with a PAL camera. Um, I have not tried it with uh, NTSC cameras, but I assume, I kind of assume that it clips a little off of the, the footage in NTSC, so uh, a little bit of footage will be lost presumably at the top and the bottom will they fix that in a future firmware top sky well maybe probably i am not that concerned as i said most people will use a dvr to refine their model and a little bit of image clipped from the top and the bottom yeah so if you use your footage for youtube as i do you probably wouldn't want that right okay so i was as you can see also able to actually fpv fly with the goggle i did do this flight here with the f7x and yeah um well um i'll come back to that in a second but it, the, the the fit on my face isn't ideal but it wasn't horrible either so well we can at least check the dvr off of our list which is great next gripe about the version one the faceplate or the foam attachment to the faceplate and i glad to say that uh, this works out very very well uh, basically the same as on uh, a lot of other goggles it just fell gross in place so case closed well not entirely there's some comfort issues with the with this version 2 uh, also in version 1 but i'll get to that in a minute the faceplate coming off well i've actually purposely just thrown the goggle into my backpack for the last two weeks to see if the faceplate would come off and it hasn't i have uh, not had to uh, re uh, attach the faceplate once not once well um so have they changed anything i'm not sure maybe i was uh, lucky that uh, mine fits very well or something but uh yeah i can only speak for mine of course mine hasn't come off so um i'm glad about that 
And the last gripe. Yeah, I already told you that I didn't have much of an issue with the ghosting in the version 1. However, I also told you that if I paid attention to it I could see it. In this version, yeah, I haven't noticed it at all. I have tried to look uh, for it. I've done, uh, I'm not sure how many FPV flights by now with it. 10 maybe. Not a whole lot. The weather's been uh, horrible over here. But I have not seen ghosting. Again, it might be due to the cameras I use. Mostly Runcam Swifts, uh, version 1's and version 2's. And well, it, was, it wasn't noticeable at least. So it's, to me, it's good enough. Something has changed. Again, in the version 1 I could definitely see it, even though I wasn't bothered by it. But um, in this uh, version 2 I didn't see it at all anymore. Might be my eyes or my brain, I, I just don't see it. So. That's um, that's very good for our gripes list, right? It's a green board all around. And does that mean that I'm going to be um, using this goggle as my daily driver for the coming months? Will I be uh, doing a very long term review of it? Well, yes. Um, I very much liked flying with it, especially the large field of view. I, I just love it. That That's very comfortable to fly with, uh, in my opinion. Uh, the reception is good, but that's obviously due to the module I use. Oh, by the way, you can now clearly see that my antenna very much uh, protects my module, the screen on my module. And yes, these are the antenna I use, uh, Immersion RC, Spironet version 2's. Okay, so are there any gripes left or new gripes well the the, the the nose bridge thing over here isn't too comfortable for me it's a bit narrow um, I'll probably take uh, a pair of scissors to that I'll open up this maybe it'll stretch out over time a little so maybe I should just give that uh, a little more time to see what happens but it basically prevents me from breathing through my nose. That's what happens. Not hugely uncomfortable, but it's it's not what you want, of course. So again, I'll uh, see if the rubber stretches out a little over time. And um, I'll get back to that in my long-term review. Again, the version 1 I didn't do a long-term review on at all, because I hated it. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, uh, but this one... Before this Top Sky F7X, my Aomwe Commander was my daily driver, a very nice goggle, but I do prefer this one. I will try and do a comparison video with another pilot present to give uh, us uh, his input on both of them. Uh, that'll be uh, coming up. And um, yeah, that's it for now. I'm um, quite happy with this uh, goggle. It's not perfect, no goggle is perfect, but for me it is very, very flyable. And um, yeah, the DVR works, uh, paramount for me of course. So um, I'll uh, get back to you on this goggle in uh, a couple of uh, weeks, months, with my long term review. And again, uh, in between that I'll uh, give you a uh, comparison between this here goggle. Oh, by the way, the price on this Top Sky goggle has gone down since I bought it. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> That's nice for you, of course. So again, check out the link in the description to see what the current pricing is. It's below uh, 300 euros now. When I ordered it, it was 350 euros. So it does make it uh, more of an option, I think, definitely. Okay, again, I'll get back to you on this goggle uh, in a couple of weeks. And if you have uh, questions, hit me up a comment down below. Catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.